Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to My Favorite Mistake. I'm Mark Graven, and I want to say welcome back. We have a returning guest today. She is Katie Anderson. She is author of the book titled Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn, Lessons from Toyota Leader, a Sal Yoshino on a Lifetime of Continuous, lear uh, continuous Learning. So um, my most recent small mistake, I don't know why I couldn't say the word continuous, but Katie was a guest with Mr. Yoshino back in episode 30 in January of 2021. So I encourage you to go listen to that if you haven't already. Um, Katie is a leadership coach. Um, you can learn more about her and her work uh, at kbjanderson.com. So Katie, welcome back to the podcast. How are you? Thank you, Mark. I am thrilled to be here today, and I've really been looking forward to coming here and using this as purpose, purposeful time for reflection and discussion with you about my recent and newest and biggest favorite mistake. A most recent mistake, a most a most favorite recent mistake. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, I there's always little. I guess my biggest recent mistake, my most <laughs> my most uh, learned from um, and impactful, both mistake and lessons learned, and it's all now a success story. So it's it's a, it's a good story of learning and growth. Yeah. So a part of me said, oh, no, you know, like I was, I was sorry to hear that that Katie had a story to tell. <laughs> but, but like you said, Katie, I mean, I, happy. I mean, of course, you you reflected on it. You learned from it as you talked about uh, back in episode 30 with uh, with the mistake that, that you, you shared with us from, from earlier in your career. But um, so I, I was going to let everyone know um, this, this leads into talking about your story that Katie's book, uh, again, it's learning to lead, leading to learn. Uh, it's available as an audio book. And that sort of leads us to, okay, gosh, uh, what happened? Yes. Well, I had many goals for myself this year. Uh, so the book learning to lead, leading to learn, uh, I published it, I published it in July of 2020. And that was super exciting in paperback and ebook. And I always knew that doing an audiobook was on my list for 2021. Uh, and I had the great experience um, and learning experience of recording it and producing it twice. And that's part yeah. of my, uh, my mistake here that I want to share. And, you know, I think one of to set the context to one of the really interesting things for me through this whole experience was that all the lessons from the book were so applicable to the experience mm. that I was going through. So I was having this sort of meta experience of relearning and rethinking about the lessons from the book as it applied to my life, as it related to actually reading the book and <laughs> learning about the, you know, the lessons. So it was sort of this interesting experience here. Uh, but yeah, it was, I recorded and produced the audiobook in la the sort of the late winter, early spring of this past year, in the middle of a, still, you know, the pandemic, we we're pretty shut down. That was a time where we still were pretty, you know, being pretty conservative, not being out and about. And so I decided to record the, you know, in this, in this lovely home studio, for those of you watching um, this on YouTube record the audiobook here in my home studio and I hired a producer to help me with this. We set up, you know, I have my wonderful mic here, but we set it up on a whole special boom and everything did some sound testing and uh, you know, I recording an audiobook is a lot, you know, I I, I knew I wanted to record it as the um, narrator because of the personal story and relationship with me and Mr. Yoshino. It didn't feel right to outsource that to someone else. And, you know, I was doing my best, wanted to put my best foot forward, and we recorded it here and was working with a, with a producer to, you know, get it all done. My vision was to have it release on this, the one-year anniversary of the book. And, you know, mm -hmm. I was on your other podcast talking about the release, and that was super, yeah. super exciting. Um, however, I learned a few things uh, through that process. And... Within weeks of, within days actually, of the audiobook coming out, realized that there were sections of the audiobook where the qual the sound quality was not to my expectation. And of course, this shouldn't have been a surprise, but it was mm -hmm. um, for a few reasons. And I'll I'll dive into that in my reflections. Mm -hmm. And my heart just sank. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, like I've spent so much, like 20 hours 
or more recording this and we did record some you know re-record some small bits of it as well mm -hmm. working on it publicizing it getting it out there I was so excited uh and then to realize that there were some quality issues that were just it wasn't like it was terrible quality but it just things that weren't what? up to what I would consider the quality grade that I would expect for an audio book. So, so what, what, what's an example of that? Because I, I know from publishing through Audible, there are certain quality checks that they do about oh, sound yeah. levels and some things, and you pass that, apparently, oh, yeah. so, but, but what, what, was, what, what, what bothered you or maybe some listeners? Right, so I want to like be clear, there wasn't like egregious <laughs> quality issues. They were more of the fine tuning quality issues where there was some discrepancy between some different sections. And really, in some of some of the sections or chapters, it sort of sounded like I was more like in a bathroom or something, kind of really mm -hmm. tinny, like that the mic really wasn't that good. Uh, and then there were, you know, it just it didn't sound that great. Something that you probably, for a 20, 30-minute podcast, you wouldn't think twice about. But in an audio book where you're listening for eight hours mm -hmm. and you're also, you know, purchasing it on iTunes or on Audible, your, ex your expectation of the grade of the quality is different. And I had mm -hmm. that same expectation as well. Um, you know, actually, it was reminding me of one of the very first things I learned about Lean when I was first introduced to the concepts, gosh, back in, what, 2006, I think, when really learning in the hospital system about the different grades of quality. And it's what the grade uh, that your customers expect, right? So mm -hmm. some people, perf you know, don't need, you don't need the Ritz Carlton mm -hmm. experience. You want just a nice best Western. This is actually from the slides and material that <laughs> I was being taught mm -hmm. at the time. And I think that same thing is, it was a sort of lesson learned for me uh, around that. Well, I went into sort of hyper mode. I had a few people reach out saying, I love the audio book, but I was, mm. did, some of the parts of the, the the recording just weren't up to what I thought. And yeah. Because yeah. well, I, I, I was going to ask if it was just your assessment or no, you did have some people yeah. reach out and say, hey, this is yeah. great, but. Yeah. And so everyone loved the story. So that wasn't the issue. And people mm -hmm. were like, I really enjoyed hearing your voice, but there were parts that where the quality wasn't up. And I had like, within like a week period, I had like four different people reach out mm -hmm. to me individually. And I really appreciate that they all reached out to me individually opposed to like giving me a, like a negative review on Audible. They all said, you know, I, we, we want, you know, we support you and let, really like the book. But, and I did take a listen and I was like, oh, so my heart sank and I was just going on vacation. So I went into hyperdrive and worked with my producer and my business manager to see if there was a way that we could uh, improve the underlying audio quality mm -hmm. of a few of those sections where there were problems. I came back from vacation and it turned out that there was just some fundamental native audio quality issues. And so I had two choices in front of me, either uh, I could just accept what it was and be out there and which isn't a terrible choice, but it wasn't, I didn't feel good for me about the quality of what the material I wanted to be putting out there or I could just come to peace that I was going to now it was the middle of summer. So we were much more open in the middle of, you know, 2021 looking to find a professional sound recording studio and go in, invest in that, you know, in, in making a financial investment and an investment of my time, which I knew would be at least over 20 hours. But to me, there was a no brainer. I was like, and as soon as I was like, went to hyperdrive, I was like looking for different sound studios. I found one actually only 30 minutes from my house, which was amazing. He's done, he does audio, like music as well as audio books. And I, he had a week available the following week when I got back from vacation. So I just said, book it in. I booked babysitters. I was like, cleared my calendar. And I felt so good just knowing that I was going to be able to correct this mistake, even though the current, you know, audio book was out there, but I was like, you just have to let it be. And I was going to do my best. And so once, you know, went in, did the re-recording and it was so good to have, you know, someone I was in a proper sound studio. You know, we just had dogs barking here as we were getting started. I didn't have all those right. sound interruptions and somebody was listening to the quality mm -hmm. of the recording as I was doing it. So mm -hmm. we knew that there, that, that sort of the root cause of, you know, this problem was that there was fundamentally some issues with some of the tracks that I had recorded. Well, and I, I was going to ask you, and, and maybe it didn't matter because going to the studio would have prevented a, a recurrence of the root cause in, in your setting. Um, did, I mean, how much time did you spend on that root cause analysis or you figured, you know, it doesn't really matter because you're not doing it again. 
on your yeah. own in your home office? Well, so I I did a little bit of root cause analysis for sure. And, you know, it, the cause ultimately came to the fact that there was some, shout, you know, there was a problem with the sound recording and our discovery was there must have been, and I didn't just go actually into what the problem was with the actual software we, we were using. Cause there were some tracks that sounded great. Uh -huh. They were like super professional, high grade quality. So it was, it wasn't that the whole setup here was inherently bad, that there, there was a mistake and it wasn't mistake proofed. I had to click a button somewhere in the software program to make sure it was connecting to my mic but there was no positive feedback to say yes it was or wasn't yeah and there the you know so then this leads into the second sort of challenge is that all right you know around the whole built-in quality and also the concept of pull the and on which is the uh, there was a little bit of time lag between me recording it and the producer working on the tracks and in the process of reflection, I think it's really important to not only go, and then I, I've been using this for all of my reflection and actually I've been talking about this in my Leading to Learn Accelerator programs, how the deeper reflection process of Hanse shouldn't just be the outcome and the actions or even the process. We really need to dive deeper into assumptions. What were the un, even the assumptions we were not even aware of, the unconscious assumptions that were unspoken assumptions that we had going into an initiative or to anything really. And how did that actually impact the actions and outcomes? And so I realized that I, as you know, the leader of this project had not communicated a few things or checked my assumptions. So one of my assumptions was that we all sort of had a shared understanding of the sound quality and expectations. I just sort of assumed that that was that was there. And two, I, I made the assumption that if there were any problems that there, you know, the, the concept of the and on at Toyota stopped the line, like alert the quality issue at the source. And in doing some reflection with my producer, she realized that she was more focused on my target of the deadline uh, of the date. And that, you know, yeah. that we, she definitely called out some, there were definitely some quality issues where I recorded second, certain bits or there was a dog barking or, you know, so we did that, mm -hmm. but listening to the, the different tracks next to each other and hearing the contrast, that wasn't part of the overall experience. So I was making the assumption that we would know that and record it. And she was also like, ah, she, it was probably fine, you know, it, but but I didn't, you know, it's just, we, there was just some communication gaps and assumptions right. made there. And I want to be really clear that I do not blame anyone for this outcome. We all, like, I played a huge role. And part of my Hansei and reflection on this has been, what was my role in this? And then how do we all learn from it and improve? Like, one of the most important things, and I was really thinking about the book the whole time of this, is how do I show, we all have an opportunity to, in, in our choices and how we respond to mistakes and failures or successes as well. And, you know, there may be, and that really shows our character. And it was really important for me to, you know, lead with the, look at the process, not blame the people and look at the role that I played too and how my actions also contributed to the outcomes that we saw. So that was some of the, the assumptions that I was making and, you know, and she was making assumptions that the timeline was more important. And she, you know, I, I didn't want to re-record. Well, of course, I didn't want to re-record, but I definitely wanted to re-record ra rather than having a lesser quality, you know, product go out to my my customers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, it was a lesson learned for all of us in that. And then, um, yeah, it just, it was, and then, also, of course, if I were to do this again for my home studio, I would really want to figure out how to mistake proof that <laughs> that right. you know quality issue. Um, you know, I I actually learned really early on to in when I first bought this in the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, there's a little green light for those of you. So I was like, oh great, like doing Zoom calls like this. Oh, that means it's connected to you know, it's working. Well, yeah, this means the power is on. It Power's doesn't mean on. that Zoom has connected to my microphone. And so I did I did a few sessions and I was like, God, the quality, like this mic is terrible. Well, I realized, no, it's, it's actually not the yeah. mic. It's the, you know, the, I've, I've, I've seen... me, I didn't even check before we went into here. So I hope, <laughs> hopefully it's connecting <laughs> to my mic. 
I, I've I've seen sometimes people like with a Yeti mic or something, they'll they'll have it facing the wrong direction, which can make um, mm. a significant difference. I've I've made a mistake, and 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 I I I basically the best I can do is go in double check every time, which leaves me prone to forgetting the check. Um, you know, I've got AirPods in that I'm using as uh, the speakers. I have a microphone. It's normally just slightly off camera. There are one or two episodes in the series where I was mistakenly using the AirPods as a microphone, which does not sound uh, nearly as good. And so I'm like, all right, well, you yeah. know, I'm not going to go back. I, I want, I'd rather have the authenticity of what I was saying in the moment, even if I'm stumbling through a question rather than going back, oh, I can re-record it with a better mic and I can, I can sound better, sl- you know, more slick, more polished. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's a podcast. Um, you know, yeah. I think people go for authenticity over well, polish. Right. Well, and so that's the difference, right? That with the expectations of the sound quality for a podcast is just different than, and, and I, I'm much more familiar with the printed word having, you know, spent my, you know, just, we were more familiar in print mm-hmm. audio is a whole nother thing. So I've learned a ton this last year about audio and one of the lessons that I would kept coming back to from the book, actually, and I want to read a short passage here because it's, uh-huh. this is such an important, the whole concept of learning from failure and mistakes is such an important part of the book. You know, we actually on the first episode of my favorite mistake that uh, episode 30, uh-huh. that Mr. Yoshino and I were on where he tells the story about his first major mistake at Toyota. And that was like the first bookend uh, of a major mistake. And the second was, him leading a project that cost Toyota $13 million at the end of his career. And I was holding Mr. Cho, President Cho's words to Mr. Yoshino in my head around this because it was like, I'm going to read it here. So he says, uh, you know, this first manager said, don't worry, mistakes can happen. You are just a beginner and you did your best. Mm -hmm. And then at the conclusion of his career, Mr. Cho said to him, you were new to the boat business and so were we at headquarters. We all make mistakes, particularly when we try something totally new. Mm -hmm. We know you took on a challenge and worked so hard to make it happen. And I was just reminding myself that too. This was a totally new thing Mm -hmm. to me doing an audio book. I'm very familiar with podcasts and, you know, video, Uh, but producing an audio book, recording an audio book and all of that was, was new. And so it's about thinking back of intentions and knowing that, I was going to correct that mistake, but to not beat myself up to it. I've been reading the back yeah. of your lovely mug here. <laughs> the Be kind to there. yourself. Nobody is perfect and we all make mistakes. Mm-hmm. The important thing is continuing to learn from our mistakes. And that is so true. Um, the story actually continued to unfold a little bit more, which is like, I felt like I was in this whirl, whirlwind of like <laughs> crazy mistake making. And I'm not sure a few other lessons learned just because I think that for those of you out there thinking of recording an audio book, um, this is helpful to know but, too. But, but before going to that, yeah. let me okay. let me ask you one follow-up question though. So yeah. when you go back and you 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 mentioned a couple of times you defined it a little bit um, and on cord, you know, in, mm. in, in a Toyota plant, just to recap, above the assembly line, there's literally a cord that's uh, that's hanging down, that's reachable. If you see a problem, if you make a mistake, if you drop a part, if there's a, a, a defect that's visible, pull the cord. And I've heard it described um, you know, the culture is one where they say, if in doubt, pull the cord, because it could be there's not really a problem, but better to err on the side of a problem. But, you know, Toyota, to be fair to you, Katie, as, as, as you describe yourself as project manager of the audio book, Toyota has spent decades building that culture of if in doubt, pull the cord. And I think, you know, one of your lessons is to be very intentional and sort of uh, trying to create that culture within a project. Because I think maybe you, that's the problem with assumptions is, as, as you put it, right? Absolutely. So uh, assuming that everyone on the team came from that same background, of course you'd highlight any problem and then, or potential problem and just to make that out. And so we were, we were, high, problems were highlighted and we corrected them. So I sort of made the assumption that everything was good. Uh, so again, how do we as leaders set clarity of direction and uncover those assumptions both for ourselves and be clear on team members so that, you know, I, I was communicating timeline with the assumption of quality and yeah. we should have talked about that. And then, you know, how do we support each other to make that happen? And, uh, you know, it's, it's been a great 
learning for me truly from like the leader of this experience and like embodying everything mm -hmm. um about the about the book uh so that was it was really it was so interesting so i was going back in you know rereading the book and you know when you when you read your i think this is one of the other challenges for me is like you I have read this book so many times, having written every word and then reading it again for 20 hours. Like, you're like, I do not want to read it again or listen <laughs> right. to myself reading it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, one of the, the lessons learned too, and this was an assumption on my part, is that uh, an audio producer is also doing all of the quality checks. They do many different quality checks, but I learned in the same way, you know, you and I've talked about when you were writing a book you have different types of editors, you know, you have your developmental editor, and then you have your content editor, and you, you have your yeah. line editor, and then you have your proofreader. Well, I kind of assumed that was all part of what happened. I needed a proofreader. Um, and we didn't have a proofreader. And that was actually, and I didn't realize this, my responsibility as the ultimate producer of, mm -hmm. the, of this audiobook. And my business manager had spot checked a few parts of the audiobook, and I did too, but you know, I don't want to listen to 20 hours of me, right. really eight hours, but you know, you don't want to really, no one loves to listen to their self anyway. Uh, but so something and a quick mistake that was found out immediately upon publishing the first version of the audiobook, one of my friends and um, colleagues pointed out that there was part of the story. Actually, the paint story was missing, but we were able to quickly, you know, get that up. But so there were some of those errors, you know, that just weren't caught. And then, uh, you know, we, the air is humid and we need to spot check these things. Well, then when I redid it, I hired somebody independently who had never read the book to read and listen to the full audio mm. track to catch any extra potential ums and ahs that were missed in the editing process to make sure that all the content was there. And so that was an additional step that I didn't realize was part of the process. I needed a proofreader which I yeah. would have known about, you know, so these are these small things that if you're looking to do an audiobook, there's a lot more steps than just uh, recording it um, in your home studio. And yeah. to give myself grace that, you know, in the pandemic, like I didn't really have many options to go into a recording studio mm -hmm. in last winter and there were, there were more available. So, you know, we all, we're all doing our best in a world of sort of mm -hmm. <laughs> craziness, but then there was, so I re-recorded it. We had, a, uh, a new editor coming in to do it just to, for the seamlessness of this. And then I reached out to Audible and said, well, what's the process if I need to swap out? And is there possible for me to switch producer names just to, mm -hmm. to give uh, different credit? And the Audible, the person like in India or whoever they were, they shut down the book. They removed it from production. So then people were getting airs on audible saying this this book is out of you know doesn't exist anymore and it, is, is, and is like, that for people who are trying to buy it or people who had yes. already bought it or getting no errors? people who bought okay. it had it but people okay. were trying to buy it and it meant that if i was mm -hmm. going to put up the new version that they it had to be totally new and it would not correct you know simply you can always update the files and then if people just refresh them they get the mm -hmm. new version and I call, you know, I reached out the customer, their support. They're like, there's nothing we can do. We deleted all the files. It's gone. And I'm like, I don't think so. I mean, I have to think that they're more like <laughs> quality yeah. controlled. Anyway, we call Audible and finally got a hold of someone on the phone and they're like, oh no, we can fix this. And yeah. so it took like three or four days. So the book was down for like five or six days. I actually had three people reach out to me like, I can't find your book. It's saying yeah. it's out of production. Like, Anyway, all got corrected. I took a deep breath, and within three and a half weeks of re-recording the audio book, it was up. I put out a big announcement. People could refresh it, and now close to 500 copies of the audio book have been sold, and you know, 21 overall five-star reviews. And so I'm feeling really happy. I mean, the story was yeah. always great. People said they loved hearing my narration. It's like people said it's like having you in you know in in my ears. Uh, and now I feel really proud of the quality that's out there it matches, you know, my expectations. And most of all, so I achieved a big goal this year, <laughs> twice, yeah. but I also, <laughs> and I learned a lot, yeah. but most importantly, I'm really proud of how I showed up in response to learning about a mistake, how I handled myself in dealing with my team members of looking at process, not blaming people. Even I felt though, I felt frustrated looking with greater reflection on the role that my actions played 
the assumptions I made and really what we could all learn going forward. And, you know, it's always, a, it always is a little anxiety provoking to share a big, you know, mistake, but I think it's really important to show that we all can make mistakes and it's okay. And just like Mr. Cho said, like, sometimes we're new to something and, right. you know, that we don't do it perfectly the first time and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's about how we respond to that and how we move forward and um, how we show up as good people, really. Yeah. And, uh, and well, so, you know, first off, thank you for, for sharing all of that. And I was going to ask you, you've, I've had trips to Japan. You lived full time in Japan for uh, a longer period of time, but you know, in one of my more recent trips, um, one thing uh, I, I may have heard about it before, but maybe, it finally kind of sunk in how important this phrase as, as translated into English of I did my best or I'm mm. doing my best. Like that phrase pops up a mm. lot in many different contexts. And it seems like that is really valued of um, yes, you know, legitimately giving it your best effort, the, the, the sense of obligation to do that. But then as you were describing sort of like this recognition of, well, you did do your best. I'm, I'm not going to fly off the handle and be upset because you know, I don't know what, what would that accomplish or is, is that fair? I mean, did, did you run across that phrase or that mindset about Absolutely. you do your best? Absolutely. The phrase is ganbate, which is the mm -hmm. command form of um, um, ganbatimas, but it's, it means literally I get, do your best and give it, give it your best. And like, you'd say I gave my best to it all. And it's, you know, it's used at school. It's used like on the playing field, uh, you know, on the pitch, it's used for anything. And it's really about this concept of we all want to strive towards excellence, but it's most important about doing our best and showing up and giving it a go and then how we learn from it. So it's, mm -hmm. I feel like the gambate and the concept of Hanse or reflection are, are mm -hmm. really important. And it's really those those two concepts are so linked in the, you know, the plan, do, study, adjust cycle, mm -hmm. the demi cycle, or what I like to call the study, adjust, plan, do cycle, because we need to remember the study to reflect, to, to learn, but also to give it a try, not get stuck in just planning, but also give it our best. Even if it's not a hundred, you know, even though the perfection isn't achieved, what are we learning from it and continuously improving? And that's the real spirit of Kaizen or continuous improvement. It's about having that self-discipline to improve ourselves for the better and giving it our best shot. Yeah. And it, it seems like the idea of doing your best then doesn't become an excuse, but it seems like in, in the case of, let's say, Mr. Yoshino's story um, of putting responsibility where it's really fair for that responsibility to, 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 to be. So, you know, Mr. Yoshino made his mistake. And my recollection of the story is that his manager, the organization responded and, and, and asking, well, how, how is it we put him in that position and that the organization learned hmm. and adjusted so that the next time somebody was a beginner in that situation, they wouldn't repeat the same mistake Mr. Yoshino made. Right. Right. Yes. So, right. They, they, they not only didn't blame him for that paint mistake when he was, a 22 year old new hire mm -hmm. and hundred cars had to be repainted. They thanked him because it showed that they had an opportunity to improve the workplace for someone else in the future. And I think that's the spirit of Mr. Cho's sta statement too. Like it wasn't just like you were new to the business. We too, as an organization were new to the business mm -hmm. and we had some responsibility here for also how it played out. And so it's okay. And they actually asked, and we talk about this in the book, asked him to conduct some self-reflection or Hanse and presented at some management leadership meetings so that as they were continuing to expand into new ventures, that this same mistake would not be repeated at the organizational level again as well. Yeah. And so that's the most important part. And, and even as you shared in your most recent favorite mistake story, Katie, you know, I, I think it takes, you know, there's this, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's maturity, um, you know, that leads to not flying off the handle, not blaming others, not flying off the handle and getting upset and stepping back and having the maturity to, to reflect and move forward in a more positive way. Because, you know, how often do we hear, uh, you know, different types of workplaces, um, you know, pe people getting yelled at and screamed at. And it's just, it, 
it, it's one response to a situation. And on some level for the person getting upset, it might be a release, but I, I would argue it's counterproductive really. Absolutely. Cause and actually this topic came out, we were in my, my last session of my leading to learn accelerator. We we're talking about the, the boat story and learning from failure and how, you know, once a mistake's out there from a failure, it, it exists. Like you can't change that, but you can change your response to it. You can have it be a learning experience or you can try and correct the mistake and, you know, make it better for the future, which is what I did is like, how can I make this right? Um, and not blame people at the same time. I mean, you know, Mr. Yoshino, there's a quote from Mr. Yoshino. I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember it right now, although I should, because I've read it so many times <laughs> in the last right. year. Um, right. but, but, you know, blame, blaming makes you, you feel good in the moment, but it yeah. doesn't really help you in the long run. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we just have to pay attention to that for ourselves and, and blaming ourselves doesn't help the situation either. So it's, uh, again, be kind to yourself, as Mark Graven says on his mind. Well, and, and I'll give credit also to Karen Ross, who sort of, in collaboration with her, those bullet points yeah. were, uh, well, were, were, were developed. They were. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Karen. And, and, and Karen has uh, some of those mugs. And, um, you know, so uh, thank you, Karen. Um, shout out to her. She was uh, yes. my, my guest in episode three of the podcast. But one other thing that comes to mind, just referencing back, to one of my other guests, Cash Nickerson, who stated it really well, and this has really stuck with me, like there's this balance between like reflecting and thinking about what happened when you've made a mistake, but not taking it so far where you're dwelling on it or beating yourself up. Like there's a healthy amount of, okay, I've analyzed it and I'm going to change some things and okay, I'm going to let it go and move on. Great. Uh, well, absolutely. And so I think that that's part of it too, is like, if you just, if you keep dwelling on it, then that's no, that's not, that's counterproductive at a certain mm-hmm. point too. So um, yes, how do you, how do you learn from it and how do you move forward? And I actually should have filled in a Daruma's eye, but this is like back to my Daruma doll, my massive yeah. collection. And you know, you have your little Daruma there too. Yeah. Um, I should have filled in an eye for my, my, my audio book goal. I'll have to go back and do that. This is going to be my Daruma for my audio book. But when you have a goal, you know, you fill in the left eye. And when you achieve your goal, yay, there's Mark's little Daruma. You fill in the right, but it's like, it's fall down seven times, get up eight. You know, this yeah. one actually does it a lot better. Yeah. Uh, and how, and maybe it's you fall down two times, you get up three. But it's the most important. It's like, how are you getting up and moving forward? It's not about necessarily always achieving your goal, but it's about how are you moving forward? And sometimes success is what you've learned rather than what you've achieved or who you've shown up as a person. So your intentions rather than the external success of achieving a specific goal. Yeah. So, well, so, the, and this is uh, a Daruma that, that Katie gave me. And on the bottom, it says January, 2018, um, when I was really working heavily on my book measures of success. Now I, my mistake, I filled in the incorrect I initially, um, but the concept was there and this, this thing was staring at me, you know, yeah. keep writing. Like yeah. it was, talking to me um, a, <laughs> a little bit. It was, encur- it was encouraging me, um, which is, I, I think, the idea. So um, again, um, Katie's book and the, 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 the second attempt better version of the audio book yeah. is available now. Katie's um, holding it up for those who are uh, yeah, and watching. I also oh. achieved, well, this is my the proof copy, but one yeah. of my other accomplishments this year was publishing the companion workbook to the book. So look at how nice and they, they echo I recognize the, the Amazon pre yes, yes. release. And now it's available yeah. in print on Amazon as well as not digital. So a lot of things happened this year. A lot of things achieved, a lot of uh, mistakes and corrections. But the most important part is in, in my, as I've been doing reflections, what I've learned mm-hmm. and how I've showed up as a person to be intentional and fulfill my per- purpose and really to be the person I want to be, even when encountering mm-hmm. challenges, setbacks, and mistakes. Yeah, that's very nicely said. So again, Katie's book is Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn, Lessons from Toyota Leader Asal Yoshino on a Lifetime of Continuous Learning. Yes. I made it through the title without stumbling over a word. So um, I encourage people to go check that out. You can find it on Amazon and Audible. Katie's website is kbjanderson.com. And, and final question you know, is we're 
here at uh, the beginning of 2022, this is the you know, beginning of the year is a time when people inevitably um, are reflecting, they're thinking about the past year, they're thinking about how they want to grow and develop and what they want to do differently in the year ahead. So, so tell us about some of the, the, the programs that you offer through your website that people might want to go check out. Great. Thanks, Mark. One, you know, I feel like 2021 was just a year of growth and like creativity and making in making things. So one of the other goals and accomplishments was I developed a program that is complementary to the book and the workbook called the Leading to Learn Accelerator. And I am now offering it as two different tiers. One is just fully self-paced, all of the pre-recorded modules, the materials, the workbook, and all of that that people can learn from. And then the other is a live facilitated community cohort, which is I've ran twice this year and will be starting the next one in March of 2022. So I'm really excited about that. You can pre-enroll now for those programs and you can go to kbjanderson.com backslash accelerator and also have a bunch of different online programs that I've led the last year and will be continuing to offer. And if you go to the courses page on my website, some classes on Hoshin planning. So how do you set your strategy and your goals for the year? And there's a session that Mr. Yoshino and I led last year on that too, which is a great start to the new year. So if you haven't started your own personal goal setting, that's a great opportunity um, for 2022 and more. So I just love connecting with people, inspiring and enabling others to live and lead with intention and creating as what we, Mr. Yoshino and I say, a chain of learning. So, you know, how we link together and we're all learners and leaders together and our bonds are strengthened through the learning that we can have together. So thank you, Mark, for being such an important part of my chain of learning <laughs> for, gosh, well over a decade now. We, we go way back. So, yeah, it's well, great. Thank, thank you, Katie. And like you said, it's a chain of learning. The reflections and, and the stories and everything in the book are, uh, are interesting and helpful and inspiring uh, to me and it prompts my own reflection. So thank you. So thank great you to, as well. Great to have you back here on the podcast. Thank you for letting me to uh, allowing me the space to reflect and to share and learn together.